Hey everybody, uh, I just got out of the Alamo Draft House Village here in North Austin where I was seeing the Justice League. Um, it is Saturday morning. Uh, the film came out Thursday night, really, uh, or Thursday. And uh, I would have been there opening night. I usually am, even though my reviews are usually really late. But um, the reason I wasn't there, of course, is because, as I've mentioned in previous videos, my uh, debit card pin number got stolen. I had to cancel my debit card, all this. And I just totally was busy with that stuff. Didn't even realize it was already time the movie was going to be released and everything. And I just, I just had lost track and was broke. So, so it's Saturday, Saturday morning, my movie pass had come in the mail. So I decided I'm going to go see this movie with movie pass. And that's what I did. And, uh, it worked out great. I highly recommend movie pass while it's available, pick it up. But, uh, one thing about movie pass is you're probably not going to be able to get into anything like that just came out unless you do what I just didn't come like during the day maybe pretty early might be the only way to make it there didn't seem like there were too many people in the, the theater right now um, maybe because I didn't look around until the end of the credits but <laughs> I don't know how many people are staying for the credits anymore but um, yeah went in saw the movie uh, my assessment of the film the Justice League here we go uh, the quick answer is I enjoyed it um, it was good uh, I'm not gonna say it was great, but I did I did think it was good. I did think you know most people are saying it's okay I think it's a little better than okay um, Maybe I'm comparing it to the films that led up to it But uh, it is definitely enjoyable. It's definitely worth going to see um, If you're a fan of the characters, I think you'll enjoy it. I think you'll want to see it multiple times even if it sucked, you might want to see it multiple times if you're a if you're a you know fan of the characters. That's just the way it is. But um, I actually really liked it. Uh, I know it's got big problems. I didn't have as many problems as other people have had with it. Uh, just to like lay out what I've heard and my feelings on these things. Um, as far as bad stuff, people have said uh, the CGI is really bad, and my opinion on that. The most distracting thing for me with the CGI, and there was some bad CGI in this. Yes, the villain is totally CGI, and that's not necessary. They didn't have to do that, um, and that sucks. But that didn't bother me as much as uh, the most distracting thing was the, there were certain scenes where uh, Clark Kent Superman has, uh, and it's not really a spoiler. Everybody knows Superman is was going to be in this movie, it, <laughs> but he had a mustache during the reshoot scenes uh or the pickup scenes that they did later and uh because he was making another movie and they digitally removed that mustache for this movie and it doesn't look right <laughs> i think that the biggest problem they have right now for making realistic cgi is that mouth area you know <laughs> so i mean it's like when you watch uh grand moff tarkin in uh in rogue one he looks amazing i think except for when he speaks it's that mouth area they haven't nailed that yet uh otherwise they've nailed everything else but depends on how much time and and budget they put on it uh, in this film i doubt budget was an issue but they must not have had enough time for a lot of the cgi a lot of the cgi you know there are just times where like backgrounds and stuff where you can tell they're not in a real place there were times like that uh, especially like towards the end there the CGI like there are some alien plants which by the way there's a happy scene where some alien plants grow I don't want to talk too much about it because I'm not trying to do spoilers but I don't feel like that's ever a happy thing if you got alien plants on earth I feel like that's a bad thing <laughs> but that was that's just me but anyway <laughs> um, yeah uh, there there's some CGI that I don't I didn't think was very good a lot of it but it didn't uh, ruin the movie for me maybe I was expecting it maybe it's just the fact that this kind of movie it doesn't bother me as much because I know a movie like this is gonna have a lot of CGI um, it's a cartoonish subject matter and of course we're here to see a lot something live action we can watch cartoons all the time with it but 
it didn't bother me too much except when it was unnecessary uh it would have been nice if they had had the time to make it better but i don't know if it was a horror film cgi doesn't belong in horror films unless it truly is like something that it's got to be perfect and it's got to be like just enhancements but this isn't a horror film this is a superhero movie and i don't know it doesn't bother me as much to have cgi in it mostly uh when i said when it's unnecessary like you have the villain entirely done in cgi that wasn't necessary yeah all his parademons that were flying around uh okay i, I get that they looked real anyway they, they didn't look bad to me but steppenwolf the main villain I mean, you know, he he did look like a video game villain, but he, he wasn't, it wasn't, I mean, other people are going to disagree with me, but I didn't think it was the worst thing at the CGI. It's just, um, really, it just wasn't a great, he, he wasn't uh, well-written or anything. It was just like, I'm the villain, I'm here to take over the world. It was not much for plot as far as the villain is concerned, um, but I didn't think that that ruined the movie or made it a bad movie because to me the movie it's like I love the Bruce Tim universe the animated universe that's my go-to for for everything of, the, of DC because I I've always been a comic book reader I've said this on many videos but not necessarily superhero comics other comics are what I read you know um but the uh but I'm, I've always been a fan of these characters huge fan because ever since I was little they were on television in various forms and in movies, you know? So I've always been a huge fan. So I know that there's a derogatory word for that kind of superhero fan, uh, but I've never uh, known what it, <laughs> I can't remember. I can never remember what the word was. I heard it once or read it once, but, <laughs> but I am a comic book reader. It just, I, I never read these comics despite what a huge fan I was of Batman and Superman and even, you know, some of the Marvel characters, mainly DC though, growing up. Right now I'm a huge Marvel fan because I'm a Disney fanatic and because their movies have been so good. But uh, I've always been a huge DC fan. Uh, as a kid, all I knew of Marvel was Hulk and Spider-Man. <laughs> I knew Captain America, but not really, you know, I knew of him. Um, but I was all about, you know, Batman, Superman, you know, you had Christopher Reeve when I was a little, little, little kid. And then you had, um, yeah, I had, you know, reruns of the 60s TV show. I was hooked on that. You know, Batgirl, my big crush. But I do love Supergirl. But anyway. <laughs> uh, but so, yeah, and I watched Super Friends every Saturday morning. So it was very appropriate that I came in here on a Saturday morning to watch this movie. And my feelings on it. Uh, and what I was going to say about the animated series, the Justice League animated series that, that came after uh, Batman and Superman animated series in the 90s. I think the Justice League when it was, might have already been 2000 when it came out. But, uh, it, you know, fantastic series. Um, but this was like watching a live action episode of that series. And uh, that's not a bad thing, you know. But it wasn't like one of the better episodes plot wise. It was just an episode that was like, it was like the pilot. I don't know if you've seen the pilot for that show. And maybe that pilot had moments that were better than this. But as I remember, like the premiere episode or episodes, I remember first seeing it as a, like a direct-to-video DVD that just, com it was probably three episodes compiled. Or maybe I saw it on Cartoon Network, but it was like a movie event. I don't remember, but... It, you know, it was more than one episode, but it was basically just an alien invasion, you know, and uh, and and you know, so that so the team had to form to uh, fight it, and I think they just kind of formed on their own. They just kind of came out of the cracks and joined up, you know, and fought, met each other while fighting the the invasion, you know, and it was basically <laughs> what we saw in Avengers in the in the first Avengers movie it was like the same thing, except that one had a little more plot because it had Loki. Uh, involved with the alien invasion and then you had um, and it was more to it you know but uh, yeah uh, I mean you know that there was you know a, a leader type head thing in the Justice League uh, that was made it a little more interesting than just an alien invasion in the show but in this movie you know it was well it was Steppenwolf but <laughs> uh, I mean uh, but uh, you know 
that's what I mean. It's like um, just one of those episodes where it's like, okay, we're just going to have this villain, but mainly it's about meeting these characters and getting to know them. And really, I would have preferred if that had been done in the individual movies, and I know that was the way Marvel did it. And a lot of fans who have complained about the way DC did it still keep saying, I don't want you to do it like Marvel did it. You know, I know it would it would be too much like Marvel to have all these different movies and no that's just the way to do it you have to do it that way you have to like introduce these characters and let us get to know them because in this movie although I really enjoyed it it seemed like it was taking too long to introduce the characters because they they kind of had to give a quick like backstory on each of them sort of um I don't know I just felt like at, at some point I, they were still sort of meeting the characters and I just felt like this is kind of going on too long. The Avengers started up, you know, you knew most of most of the characters already. And it was just better that way, you know. But this movie was still great. I wasn't bored. It was exciting. It was fun. It was funny a lot. Um, there were, It was brighter. Uh, Superman was so much better. Um, then the characters were, were really good. I liked them. Uh, I've heard complaints about Cyborg in this movie. I did not um, dislike Cyborg. Um, I thought his acting was fine. I thought it fit, you know. I don't know that character really well beyond watching Teen Titans and stuff where he's more of a comedic, I mean, you know, not always, but he makes a lot of jokes and stuff. And this one is very serious, but I don't know. I just, it seemed to, to fit the character for me. Uh, I thought the acting was fine with that character. Um, you know, Flash was great. There's there's some hilarious, <laughs> there's a hilarious Pet Cemetery thing uh, involved because, you know, Superman is dead when this movie starts. That's all I'm going to say. But there's a, a joke about Pet Cemetery that is brought up and then brought up again. And the second time just killed me with it. Uh, but, um, yeah, you know, Flash is kind of the jokey one um, in this. And uh, But there's more than that. It's not just like, oh, here's your comic relief character. There were funny moments throughout from various characters. I was anticipating a lot of bad, like, jokes that just didn't hit. Uh, cause I had heard reviews saying there's jokes that hit and there's jokes that, that miss. Um, I maybe like saw like w maybe one joke that missed maybe for me. I can't even remember. Maybe there was more than one, but not a lot. Mostly when they were being funny, it was funny. I thought there was going to be a lot of humor that <sighs> seemed forced because again, from other reviews, I got that. And I'm usually very sensitive to that forced humor. I really don't like it. But I didn't feel it that much. I, I just, maybe one or two times, you know, that it, that it was like, okay, they're making a joke just because they need a joke. But I didn't, feel, I didn't feel that way for most of this movie. I really thought it was, it flowed a lot better than what I heard in other reviews. I don't know if people are being harder on this movie just because right now it's like, we're expecting the worst and uh, from DC because now Wonder Woman was fantastic, but we all kind of thought that was maybe that was a fluke or just because, you know, Gal Gadot uh, is, is really good at, surprisingly to some people, but I, I, I never mind. I, I never thought that was bad casting. I mean, I had somebody in mind that I would have liked to have seen as Wonder Woman, but I, I thought she was great. Um, and uh, I don't know. I, I think... Uh, Despite Wonder Woman, people didn't expect this to be good. Um, and a lot of people don't think it's good. Or a lot of people, again, the majority are just saying it's okay. Um, I think it's good. I, I don't think it's the great... It's, it's not a, a blow-you-away type plot at all. The plot is what's just kind of run-of-the-mill TV cartoon episode like not the best tv cartoon episode plot wise <laughs> definitely not i mean you know they had like deep episodes of those uh, bruce tim shows the, this was not you know this would have been just like fight the villain episode um maybe even simpler than than any of those uh paul dini bruce tim uh episodes i don't know but um but it felt like like watching one of the episodes of the justice league that maybe wasn't the best but it's still good because they were all good. Uh, so, I mean, I recommend it. I, I think the, the the thrill of it is seeing these characters together, uh, seeing them in live action, some of them we've never seen before. Um, I still don't love 
Flash's suit being an armor type suit. I don't care if it makes sense or not. I I like it being more of a an organic type suit, like more of a felt kind of a or a material type thing. But whatever, that's <laughs> and we have we have a lot of versions of that. You know, there's the TV show. I haven't watched that in a while, but I think that's more of a material type thing, isn't it? Maybe I'm thinking of the old TV show. <laughs> but I, I don't know. Um, Aquaman was great. Um, Wonder Woman was fantastic. Uh, everybody loved, or <laughs> I should say, the thing that most people liked about Batman versus Superman, which was very little, most people liked or thought that Ben Affleck turned out to be really good casting as Bruce Wayne and Batman. And uh, I was kind of on the fence on that. And I think it was because of the, the writing of Batman v Superman. But um, yeah, in this film, I was pretty sold on him. He was pretty awesome. Uh, and uh, uh, my favorite Batman, Bruce Wayne so far, honestly, is the kid from Gotham. I think he's amazing as Bruce Wayne. But uh, yeah, I want to get into that right now. I, I really like that show. But um, what else? Uh, Commissioner Gordon I was worried about, but I liked him. Uh, who else? Um, Superman, again, I, I really like Superman in this one. Aside from the times that I could see CGI around here, <laughs> which wasn't, I don't know. I don't know how often that happened. Maybe there were times when it was better than others. But, uh, uh, yeah, aside from that, I really liked him in this movie. Um, uh, who am I forgetting? Cyborg Flash, Wonder Aquaman was, uh, turned out to be really good. He's very much like a Thor-type character. That's, that, and, you know, I mean, that's fine. It's just, this is like their their Thor because you know they have parallels uh, um they uh let's see who else I'm, I feel like I'm forgetting somebody Cyborg Flash Thor I'm uh, Thor sorry. Aquaman Superman Batman Wonder Woman am I forgetting somebody if I'm forgetting somebody that doesn't bode well for their character uh <laughs> I guess that was everybody Wonder Woman Flash Aquaman Batman Cyborg and uh, Superman, right? I would really hate to be forgetting someone. Okay, I think that's everybody. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and, and they were all great. They were all really good. There's a part where Aquaman goes down to the uh, ocean and talks to a character that, uh, you know, I, <laughs> I because I haven't read the comics, I'm, I was pretty sure that was supposed to be his wife. But uh, when in this movie... It didn't seem like he was talking to his wife. So I don't know if they're not married yet or maybe I'm wrong that that's his wife. Uh, it's it just, it seemed like he was just talking to somebody who was taking his place while he was up on land all the time. I don't, I don't know. Um, I was pretty sure that was supposed to be his wife character, but again, I never read uh, uh, the comics. Um, so, uh, you know, much of the plot is, uh, at first for quite a while getting this group together and you know little bits of what was going on with the villain which was very little he attacks the mascara and he uh he's trying to collect the, the mother boxes there's only three <laughs> so um there wasn't much plot really the except getting the gang together and a big part of it was bringing superman back to life uh, should I have said spoil? I, I don't. Okay, here's where it would get spoiler alerty, uh, but I'm not gonna get into that, because I, I think I said enough right there. Bringing Superman back to life, I'm not gonna talk about how they did it or whatever, but uh, it. I was concerned because I had heard about how it was done, but it wasn't that bad. It actually was a really interesting, good uh, aspect of the film, and and probably the most meaty aspect of the film beyond the uh you know it's like i said it, it was intro introducing the characters and then it's the fight when they actually go fight steppenwolf and in between that is just you know bringing superman back uh but that's a, a you know a very good part of the film but uh it made and it made it seem like a pretty short film and some people have complained about that <laughs> and they're saying i want to see you know the rest of the film uh and they need to put that you know d you know director's cut i feel like if they put it in you're gonna be like this film's too long and all this stuff uh i thought it was great it was fine it, it did enough of everything um it wasn't like fantastic story but 
the characters were excellent and we got to meet not the villain but you know the characters were the heroes and we just got to get to know them it was a good starting point but again it was like an episode of a tv show it was like a pilot it was like a pilot of a tv show um uh, so, you know, if you wanted to see these characters in live action, that's what you get here. If you want to see something really epic and dramatic and amazing, you know, that's, you know, you're not going to really get that here, but uh, maybe in the future. I'm excited for the future films, though I think from the teaser, you know how the, there's there's two scenes. There's one scene during the credits that is more of a jokey scene, but it's fantastic. And then there's the scene at the end of the credits, which... Um, uh, the guy sitting, you know, there's a pretty cool guy sitting a couple of seats next to me. We were, we were talking about the characters before the movie started. Um, <laughs> but after he saw, like, the end credit scene, he was like, that wasn't worth staying for the end of the credits for. I, I enjoyed it. it was a, I, I don't want to give a spoiler about it. You probably already know if you watched other reviews. But, um, you know, it was a teaser for the future. And it's, you know, I, I know there was a period where the, the comics were like this. But to me, when I think of the Justice League, I always go to the animated show. Uh, and I always think of that satellite up in space, you know, very updated, the watchtower satellite that they all like, not a satellite, space station, where they, they all sort of like, it's their headquarters. And uh, in this one, it was like the Hall of, uh, I, I spoiled that. <laughs> but, the, you know, they're sort of setting up for the Hall of Justice and for, um, you know, the Legion of Doom and stuff. And, and, and to me, I, I'm sure that that's from the comics maybe, but to me, it makes me think of the old Superman's car, Super Super Friends cartoon that I used to wake up and watch Saturday mornings. So I feel like they're taking this like the Saturday morning cartoon route. And I don't care, it's fine. I mean, it was an improvement over Man of Steel and Batman versus Superman, not in terms of the drama, but in terms of just being a more enjoyable film experience. If anything, they've kind of taken away the most of the drama and seriousness. I mean, there's still some. You know, you had stuff with Lois Lane and it wasn't bad this time. And you had stuff with Superman's mom and it, it was great. It was actually really good in this movie. Uh, it was important in this movie and it, it made sense and it, and it was more natural. You felt a, a little more chemistry, you know? It was better this time that stuff you know so basically there wasn't really anything i didn't like about this movie uh it just it wasn't as epic as it could have been but you got to also keep in mind this is the first justice league movie if this was a huge epic thing what's the next justice league movie gonna be you know maybe they played it smart by not overdoing it um everybody was like well where's dark side well if they don't use Darkseid now, they can use them later, and that's better for them. They've got something else to go to that's bigger than Steppenwolf. Um, they, they, uh, they. If a lot of people are like, "Oh, with their te teasing Legion of Doom," then they're so they're dropping the whole Darkseid thing. I don't know why they're saying that. I mean, you can go back and forth. You can do some with this villain and that villain. You know, you, you can go back to a villain later. You know. And I think, I mean, that's what the show would do. I feel like what we're getting now is a live action version of sort of an amalgam of the cartoon shows that have existed in the past. And that's fine. I like that. I'm, I'm up for that. I'm totally up for that. I mean, ideally, we would be getting the ultimate DC universe like Marvel did. I feel like they give us an ultimate uh, film universe. And... I was hoping that was what we were going to get with DC, and I feel like they, they botched that, and I feel like they botched that, you know, like for, you know, because, you know, I, 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 I'm okay with, there are things I liked about Man of Steel, there are things I liked about Batman v Superman, but that was, there were things I really didn't like about both of those movies too. I didn't hate them as much as a lot of people, but, uh, and then, um, I might have even said I liked them when I first saw them uh, because there were things I really liked and it was it's exciting to see these characters together it really is uh, but um, <laughs> but uh, you know they like like and I actually liked Suicide Squad that one I did like but like the Joker in Suicide Squad I didn't hate him as a random version of the Joker but this is supposed to be the DC Universe 
for films, like the ultimate one. So we should have gotten the most true Joker. That, this isn't the time to experiment with characters. That's what I'm saying. This is the time to give us the truest versions of the characters. That's why I always go back to the Tim Burton stuff. Uh, I mean, Tim, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, the uh, the Bruce Tim stuff. Uh, that is like the truest to me. That is like this is the icons. This is the iconic version of these characters. We're getting the ultimate icon versions of all these characters. I love the DC uh, animated universe that Bruce Tim created for television. I love that. And uh, uh, this uh, in in these films in this line of films. There are so, some characters that are fine in a one-off movie uh, or, you know, a couple of, like a trilogy or whatever. But to make it part of the ultimate universe, I mean, you know, I would have rather had Mark Hamill, you know, playing the Joker, you know. <laughs> and I'm not saying they should have done that. I mean, but somebody channeling that would have been what I would have wanted. But, uh, you know. I'm a, I'm a fan of the cartoon show. What can I say? But I I and that's what if anything made me upset about the uh, the previous movies, particularly uh, you know Man of Steel and Batman v Superman, because I did like the Suicide Squad for the most part, um, and I loved Wonder Woman. Uh, but that you know that would be it. It's just the fact that you're creating the ultimate universe. This isn't the time to experiment, and it's not the time to take. You know, they were dragging things down with too much emo darkness and everything and in the, the first two with Superman and everything and Batman. And the writing needs to get better. The writing does need to get better. Um, I think probably Joss Whedon fixed up a lot of the of the dialogue in this. Uh, and I mean, sometimes Joss Whedon dialogue can get annoying, but I didn't have any moments like that in this film. Uh, it was basically just... It was a really enjoyable Justice League movie with a plot that was really simple and cartoonish. Uh, not cartoonish in, in an overly silly sense, but just an overly simple sense, you know? Uh, the villain, super forgettable. Um, there was supposed to, they were supposed to have the, uh, the Superman theme, the classic John Williams one, in the film somewhere. I missed it, and I was really disappointed that I missed it. And it also tells me that they didn't use it strongly enough. Because uh, I think that would have been a great thing just to have that theme when Superman comes back, you know, and maybe that's when they played it and I forgot to listen for it, but I shouldn't have had to. I should have like heard it like really strongly uh, because I think that with the way people feel about the DC movies right now, aside from Wonder Woman, I think uh, that would have given it a great boost. You know, I know it's just a little thing, but. You know, people love, a lot of people love that music. To me, it's, to me, they should never stop using that as Superman's theme, just like they never stop using the William Tell Overture for uh, for Lone Ranger. I know that doesn't save Lone Ranger movies, but, I mean, it has become his theme music because they used it on the radio all those, you know, what, 100 years ago, or whatever, almost. <laughs> but, uh, you know, um I, you know that that John Williams John Williams is the best to me. You know John Williams music uh, and and uh, the the uh, t uh, I want to say Tim Burton the uh, Danny Elfman Batman theme, uh, which might have been also in the film too. But again, I didn't notice it because maybe because there was a lot of explosions and stuff going on. <laughs> Make it more noticeable. Those two themes should permanently be the themes for Superman and Batman because none of the other ones have. I, I haven't even noticed the theme music for any other Superman, Batman, uh, except for the animated show. But <laughs> anyway, I think it's a good movie. Um, I think it's a good movie in terms of enjoying great characters and it's just fun, but it's like a live action Saturday morning cartoon. That's what it is. That sums it up. That's that's my opinion on it. Uh, I want to see it again in theaters. Definitely going to buy it when it comes out. Even if it sucked, I probably would have. I have the Green Lantern movie, you know? <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I recommend it. Um, I hope it does, uh, I hope it does well enough to, to get another one because I think they're going to be more fun than the first two were. And, uh, you know, I think they've been improving. This isn't as good as Wonder Woman, but, uh, it's a different kind of thing. And, uh, it's, 
it's good in its own way, you know. Wonder Woman was more epic, but I really enjoyed it. Um, looking forward to seeing more, uh, which is good because, it's, I, I mean, I always was, but I was also, like, uh, thinking it after Batman v Superman, which a lot of it, I there were things I liked. I, I probably came out of it saying, it, you know, that I liked it a lot, but in retrospect, I didn't like it that much. I just wanted to. <laughs> um, but this one, I did like it quite a bit, but the villain was blah, you know. Uh, there wasn't hardly hardly any plot besides what I said. Get the group together, bring Superman back, fight uh, the villain, and it was literally just that. But it was fun the whole time. And it was it would never drag you down. It was never like a... You know, this is like depressing or whatever. Go see it, guys. It's good. It's good. It's just not great. <laughs> Parts of things, things are great in it. The plots, the plots, not great. But it's it's typical of like, I don't know, cartoons. Uh, but I, I really like it. <laughs>